like that in jail. Mr. President, this weekend lawmakers are working on the next round of release packages. What was not in the stimulus package that you signed last week that you would like to see in phase four? Well, I think we're going to need more money for the small businesses. It's been working out so well. It's been so efficient. The banks have been doing an incredible job. I think we're going to need more money there. I think. You know, we'll see. But based on the first, uh, the first couple of days, it's been incredible. Uh, I think that restaurants and entertainment, uh, that would be — include sports leagues, all forms of entertainment, go back to the original, where they get tax deductibility for what they're doing and for people come in and buy tickets or go out for meals. And corporations can then send people into these restaurants who are going to have a hard time otherwise opening, in my opinion. And that could be the same for the sports leagues. So uh, we want to see for entertainment and for restaurants deductibility so that corporations can take a deduction. They'll send their executives, they'll send people there, and they get a deduction. Uh, that is something that will really bring life back to the restaurants. I think make them hotter than before. You know, they used to have it. And when they ended it, it was really never the same. It was never the same. Yeah, please. Mr. President, uh, you just said that uh, you want to see as few lives lost as possible in this right. pandemic. That's right. um, but there are still eight governors, all Republicans, who have refused to issue these statewide stay-at-home orders. Your own experts, including Dr. Fauci, have said stay-at-home orders are the most effective way uh, to stop the spread of this virus. So, so why not do everything possible well, and urge governors right yeah. now yeah. to do that? Uh, we have a thing called the Constitution which I cherish, number one. Number two, those governors, I know every one of them, they're doing a great job. Uh, they're being very, very successful in what they're doing. And as you know, I want the governors to be running things now. In some cases, we'll supersede. But in this case, it's not... Do you think they should? I'm not asking if you I think it depends. To, it depends on the individual state that you're talking about. But they're doing very well, and they're doing a magnificent job in running their states. Well, South Carolina has 1,700 cases right now of coronavirus. Uh, Utah has 1,255. I mean, are these not states that you think should have no, those No, I think they're doing a great job. Well, that's a very small number relative to population. It's larger than some states that do have stay-at-home orders okay, already that's, that's, It's up to the... If I saw something wrong, if I saw a, a massive breakout, of which that's not, I would come down very hard. But — Isn't the key in this pandemic getting ahead of those numbers, though? No, not in that case. But in the case — I know the states you're talking about. By the way, I think you're up to 92 percent is covered. 92 percent of the country is covered. And from a constitutional standpoint, they made the difference. They called the shots. Yes, Jeff, go ahead. Mr. President, just a question about messaging. You and the others here are saying people need to continue following the mitigation efforts. But you're also saying, again, the cure must not be worse than the problem. Which is it? No, I'm just saying we have to get this country open, Jeff. It has to get open. This country was not designed to be closed. So we have the greatest we've ever had, and then we're paying people to stay home? We're, think of it. We're right paying now. people not to go to work. How about that? How does that play? I understand that and they right. want to go to work, by the way. They don't even want — they don't want money. This country is great. But we're paying people. We have to get back to work. That's what I'm saying. Go ahead, please. Mr. President, this is off topic. It's about the announcement from last night. It's a yes or no question, but not that we expect the answer to be yes or no. But wasn't Michael Atkinson doing the job of the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, the job he was supposed to do when he simply took the whistleblower complaint to Congress and what hadn't been taken previously? Wasn't he doing the job that he was supposed to do, that American taxpayers were paying him to do? And why did you decide to try? I thought he did a terrible job, absolutely terrible. He took a whistleblower report, which turned out to be a fake report. It was fake. It was totally wrong. It was about my conversation with the president of Ukraine. He took a fake report, and he brought it to Congress with an emergency, okay? Not a big Trump fan, that I can tell you. Instead of saying, and we offered this to him, no, no, we will take the conversation where, fortunately, we had a transcript. If we didn't have a transcript with the kind of uh, deception and dishonesty that were practiced by the Democrats, I might not be standing here right now, okay? Fortunately, we had a transcript. And it was a perfect transcript because even the lieutenant colonel admitted it was correct. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You asked a question. So he took this whistleblower. And I keep saying, where's the whistleblower, right? And why was the whistleblower allowed to do this? Why was he allowed to be, you call it fraudulent or incorrect transcript? 
So we offered this IG. I don't know him. I don't think I ever met him. I don't think I, he never even came in to see me. How can you do that without seeing the person? He never came in to see me, never requested to see me. He took this terrible, inaccurate whistleblower report, right? And he brought it to Congress. We offered to have him see my exact conversation. It was all about the conversation, by the way. That was the whole thing. It was about the conversation, right? And then after he saw it, he must have said, wow, because as I've said it many times, and it drives you people crazy, it was a perfect conversation. So instead of going and saying, gee, this is a terrible thing he said about the President's conversation. Well, it was a fraud. I didn't say that. And by the way, you have the whistleblower. Where's the informer, right? And here's another question. Remember before I did the — before I gave the transcript, in other words, before I revealed the real conversation, where's the second whistleblower? Remember the second whistle? Wait, 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 wait. There was going to be a second whistleblower. But after I gave the conversation, he just went away. He miraculously went away. Where's the informer? Because there was going to be this informer. Maybe Schiff was the informer. You ever think of that? He's a corrupt guy. He's a corrupt politician. So listen, I say this. Where's the informer? Remember, the informer was coming forward. But I gave. Because, see, I did one thing that surprised everybody. This gentleman right here said, boy, that was a shocker. I revealed the conversation. I got approval from Ukraine, because I didn't want to do it without their approval. And they said, absolutely, you did nothing wrong. By the way, President of Ukraine, foreign minister, said he did nothing wrong. And over that, with 196 to nothing vote by the Republicans, not one dissenting Republican vote, dishonest Democrats impeached a President of the United States. That man is a disgrace to IGs. All right, let's go next, please.